Nizel mil komal edizzjoni tal-lum tal-program Flusek. Il-lum program ftit differenti mis-soltu, aħna fil-gzira zajra taħna jiġu bosta Fund Managers International u rappresentanti ta' Fund Managers International u l-lum. Anna, il-fortuna li konna t-nej minnum fil-studio s-televizivi taħna. Nil-amana lil-Will Kenny u Peter Rutter li umma zewċ Fund Managers International u l-lum ser nitkellmu dwar Teamed funds. Um, Will, Peter, first of all, welcome on our program. I'm going to start with you, Peter. Um, which teams are you currently investing in? Yeah, there's many exciting economic themes occurring in the world at the moment, and the fund uh, we run is invested in some of them. Uh, one is uh, US economic recovery, which mm -hmm. uh, is a very dynamic uh, economy, is recovering very well uh, from the global recession. Um, so we have several holdings that benefit from that. Um, another theme that we're invested in is the growth in global consumption with countries like India and China and Brazil. Uh, with many uh, consumers entering the global capitalist system, there's a lot of uh, growth in consumption associated uh, with that. And a final theme is around innovation. There's many technological and industrial innovations occurring in the world, whether that's improving engines or uh, smartphone revolution. Mm -hmm. And there's many companies that benefit from this, and this is something we're also invested in. Mm -hmm. Will, what are the, strate the strategies you use when selecting um, uh, equities? It's very complicated to invest in global equities because mm -hmm. there are over 3,000 companies that we can invest in. So okay. we have some very useful tools. Peter was actually at Cambridge University and uh, worked on some data uh, in combination with NASA to try and identify shapes on volcanoes and using some of the images from space. And actually, it's, it's, quite, a, it's, it's quite a similar task trying to work out which companies to invest in. So we have a number of tools that have been built to try and identify which the best companies to invest in are and at the best valuation. We then do a lot of mm -hmm. detailed due diligence to try and identify exactly which of the companies that we want to invest in. Mm -hmm. So what type of shares do you hold in your portfolio, Peter? Yeah, every share that's in the portfolio has three attributes associated with it. Firstly, it's in a company that is creating significant amounts of wealth for shareholders. Um, the second attribute is that we think the shares of that company are cheap uh, relatively mm -hmm. to what the company is worth. And finally, every in, uh, holding in the portfolio has a margin of safety around it, so it's a very strong, robust uh, business model. Um, so examples of things we own are therefore um, things like American Express or, or Adidas, um, very strong uh, global businesses um, with, that are creating a lot of uh, value for shareholders. Mm -hmm. um, usually shares are associated with higher risk. Um, how do you limit risk within teamed funds? Um, you best yeah, we, we have a portfolio that we know and understand all mm -hmm. of the companies in great okay. detail. So we uh, conduct rigorous due diligence on all of these companies. We've met the management of virtually every company we invest in. In fact, I'm uh, going to America next week to meet the management of some of the, uh, some of the companies and get an update on, on the companies we invest in and visit okay. some of their facilities. But the important thing is that there's also um, a valuation case for the companies that we invest in. We don't, we don't get excited and chase uh, exciting new new businesses that, that really don't make any money yet. We're interested in businesses mm -hmm. that generate cash, and so the valuation is there and will be supported. Even in these difficult economic times, mm -hmm. these companies are very profitable and have uh, a strong valuation case. So, Peter, do you take profits and sell at a loss? Um, we, we do take profits and we do sell at a loss, but mm -hmm. the decision around a transaction in, in the portfolio is based entirely around value. So if we um, think a share is no longer um, worth much more than the current price in the market, we will, we will sell it, um, even, if it's, um, even if it's gone up. Um, if the fundamentals have gone up even more, uh, we, we may actually buy more, even though it's gone up. Um, so, so the decision around buying and selling shares is based around what we think they're worth and what they're priced for in the market. It's mm -hmm. independent of whether we've made a profit or mm -hmm. a loss in those shares. Mm -hmm. Do you think now is the right time to buy shares? That's a very good question. A very difficult one it's to answer. It's a very difficult question. I think investors are faced with a real conundrum uh -huh. at the moment. Um, Low-risk asset classes such as cash and uh -huh. government bonds are producing almost no return, exactly. um, very low yields. Mm -hmm. And so it's possible to get uh, safety of principle, but it comes at the cost of very low returns. In contrast, shares um, mm -hmm. offer much higher returns potentially, but there's more volatility associated with that. 
Currently, we think that uh, most asset classes are quite expensive. Mm -hmm. However, shares uh, appear relatively attractive compared to uh, other investments like bonds and, mm -hmm. and cash. And that's because um, they, they offer the chance of making a good return at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, timing is always an exceptionally difficult thing when, when choosing to invest in, in equity markets. But I think at the moment it's clear that there is a relative valuation case for mm -hmm. investing in shares mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, Will, finally, do you think that investors should hold some equities in their portfolio? Anyone with an investment horizon of over three years, and realistically most people are saving uh, for their retirement or for some long-term liability like their children's education, so they have that, that long-term liability or a horizon of over three years, it's probably appropriate to hold some shares in your portfolio. Over the long term, the last 100 years, shares have, have significantly outperformed. Over the last 10 years, they've had a more difficult time, uh -huh, partly because of the starting point and the, mm -hmm. and, and, and the tech boom. But we think, it, we think it is appropriate, and of course, it's important to pick the right shares, mm -hmm. and so uh, perhaps to pick the, the right manager or to make sure that there's that, that uh -huh. security mm -hmm. uh, within the shares that you so have. So individual shares or a, f or a fund? Well, <laughs> if you have the time and, and, and the skills, then individual shares are, are a good idea. But you have to monitor them and, 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 and actively manage them, and that can take... Uh -huh. Um, quite a bit of time and resource. And you need, you need a lot of know-how as well. You need to be a, a seasoned investor as well to invest in individual equities. Uh, ab absolutely. We, 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 think it's, uh, we think it's sensible to, 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 um, to really let experts take, uh, take care of things, and that's why, that's why we work in the industry that we do. But, yeah. um, of course, if you, if you have the time, and particularly a company that you know or are familiar with, uh, and you can do that due diligence, then... Individual shares can offer an attractive uh, opportunity, but you need to diversify as well. Exactly, and, and uh, funds offer that diversification, that diversification as, as exactly. well.